So now let's talk about type 2 diabetes and how did it get this bad. Many of you may know we have an epidemic of type 2 diabetes in this country and around the world. How did we get here and what is diabetes? Well, let's take someone who has carbohydrate intolerance or insulin resistance. We know they get into a vicious cycle when they eat carbs over their tolerance. And eventually, their system can't keep up with the insulin needed to dispose of the sugar coming in. And so blood sugar starts to rise. That's type 2 diabetes. Strictly defining type 2 diabetes means two fasting blood sugars over 126 or an A1C above 6.5. An A1C is the way we keep track of long-term blood sugar. An A1C is a look at what someone's blood sugar average has been over the three months prior. So both of these things, both of the ways that we diagnose diabetes are looking directly at blood sugar because elevated blood sugar is the problem with type 2 diabetes. Now, how bad is this diabetes epidemic? Again, worse than most people realize. Four in 10 Americans have prediabetes, and one in seven already have the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Overall, 52% of adults in this country have diabetes or prediabetes. 52%, that is a striking number. We have a huge problem on our hands. How did this happen? Well, let's go back and take a look at our food pyramid. I'm sure all of you remember this. It was around for decades. And what did the food pyramid tell us? It told us to restrict fat significantly, very little to almost none. And it instructed us to eat carbohydrates, a lot of them. Well over half of our calorie consumption every day, we were told to consume through carbohydrates. And the interesting thing to note is of our macronutrients, proteins, carbs, and fats, carbohydrates are the only macronutrients humans don't actually have to have to function. Yet we were told to eat them, a lot of them. And what happened? What was the association? It didn't go so well. What the food pyramid was, was an experiment on the American public and it failed. And it led to the rise to the epidemic of not only type 2 diabetes, but also obesity. And we have to find a way to back out. Now, let's go back and talk about those low fat foods that we were encouraged to eat with the food pyramid. Let's take low-fat yogurt. Most people think of low-fat yogurt as being a very healthy food. It may even be something you feel good feeding your children on their way out the door in the morning. But a low-fat yogurt has a lot of carbohydrates in it. And what's going to happen, especially in someone who has a low carbohydrate tolerance, it's going to cause their insulin levels to rise and their blood sugar to go up. These low fat foods have contributed to the rise, the epidemic of obesity and type 2 diabetes. So let's go back and talk again about type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes means our blood sugar is elevated. What we eat has a direct impact on that blood sugar. When we consume carbohydrates, our blood sugar rises. With proteins, it's better, but with fat consumption, there's not a rise in blood sugar. And let's remember, that's what we were told to restrict. But for the epidemic of diabetes, insulin resistance, for people who are carbohydrate intolerant, fat is the science-based macronutrient that we should be consuming. So let's remember diabetes. 
diabetes is a problem of elevated blood sugar that comes from years of carbohydrate intolerance driven by insulin resistance. 